welcome students to the video module on electron diffraction and the davison germer experiment it is also known as gp thompson experiment three scientists credited for uh, this experiment davison lester germer and george thompson and they were awarded nobel prize in 1937 you know this experiment basically for proving or verifying the matter wave concept given by louis victor de broglie we learned in the previous module about the matter waves louis victor de broglie proposed an idea that each material particle is associated with a wave and its wavelength um, is given by lambda equal to h divided by p where h is the planck's constant and p is the uh, momentum of the particle davison and germer experiment is for the experimental verification of L victor de broglie's idea of matter waves as you can see the arrangement consists of a nickel target a metal <coughs> nickel is a metal a metal target and there is an electron gun which can emit electrons at the desired speed by accelerating uh, by applying uh, the potential we can apply desired potential to accelerate the electrons towards the nickel target and the electrons scattered from the target Uh, they uh, uh, scatter to all directions and that can be detected with the help of a movable detector the diffracted electron beam can be detected with the help of a movable detector the entire setup is evacuated to avoid any type of collision of electrons with other particles okay then from this experiment the experimental observations you can see that the experimental observations here the experimental observations uh, represents the incident beam direction at different i mean incident beam uh, direction uh, is shown in the downward direction okay so the scattered intensity is collected this is scattered intensity is plotted with the various accelerating potentials on this graph you can see that it's a normal curve except that a peak occur at a particular angle with the incident direction theta is the angle you can see that at a 50 degree from incident direction the emergent or the scatter diffracted beams represents a higher intensity than the normal intensity whatever the voltage either it is 40 volt 48 volt 54 volt 60 volt whatever it is but at at this angle 50 degree it showed an in, an uh, increase in the intensity sudden increase in the intensity why such a sudden increase in intensity this can be explained with the help of superposition of waves only so they explained that such a peak in intensity occur because of the constructive superposition of waves so we know that the it, the scattered things are electrons and their particles then but for observing this type of a peak at a particular angle that they uh, Uh, you know uh, they propose the idea that uh, these electrons are assisted uh, uh, they they consist of some sort of waves along with that that is why this type of a superposition occurs at 50 degree because we know that in uh, the uh, wa interference or constructive superposition is a property of waves right interference is a property of waves so this is actually an experimental proof that the movement of electron is associated with a wave also if there is no such a wave behavior such an increase in peak could not be um, uh, occurred at uh, this angle 
So they explained that this peak in intensity of the scattered beam is due to the constructive interference, constructive superposition of waves. So the movement of electrons are associated with the waves. Associated with waves, I mean. Then they tried to calculate the wave length of these waves. How? And they explained that this electrons are diffracted from the uh, planes of crystal planes of nickel target and by applying the expression for uh, wavelength n lambda equal to 2 d sin theta this is the Bragg's equation 2 d sin theta is the path difference that must be n lambda where n equal to uh, 1 2 3 etc for and that is the condition for uh, constructive addition. So here, uh, n equal to 1 for the f uh, reflection from the first surface, first layers. So lambda equal to 2d sine theta. But the value of d is a non-factor because the metal we use is crystal. So the value of d is uh, around 0.91 angstrom. In the case of metal, value of D is 0.91 angstrom. 1 angstrom is 10 to the power minus 10 meter. And from the figure, or from the experiment, the maximum occur at an angle 50 degree. The maximum occur at an angle 50 degree. So, if that angle is 50, I mean 50 degree with the incident direction, then what will be the angle theta? This is 5. The angle 50 degree is a 5. It is an angle made by the diffracted beam with respect to the incident direction. Okay. So it is like this. Um, you see, if this is the surface, this is the. I mean, you consider this as the incident beam. Okay. This as the incident beam, and this is the refracted. I mean, a diffracted beam. This is the phi, that angle 50 degree term. But we need the angle that we need is the angle made by this angle we need theta okay this is theta here also theta why because uh, I'll just uh, redraw this diagram uh, it's not okay this is one surface this is the incident beam and uh, this is the reflector beam the angle between these two is phi the angle here is theta and the angle here is theta so you can write theta plus phi plus theta is 180 so 2 theta plus phi is 180. So theta is equal to 180 minus phi divided by 2. That is in this case 180 minus 50 divided by 2. So 130 divided by 2 it becomes 65 degree. So we got that answer 65. Then substitute that value and find the value of lambda. So everything else is known. N is 1. D is 0 0.914 nickel. And sin theta is 65 degree uh, uh, constructive superposition of course. So using that, the value of D calculated as 1.65 angstrom. So the value of the interplanar separation is obtained to be 1.65 angstrom. Now, we know that according to de Broglie relation lambda equal to h divided by p but what is the expression for kinetic energy k it is half m v square uh, multiply and divide with m you will get m square divided by m here so this can be written as p square momentum square divided by 2m so what is p the momentum p is equal to 2 m k under root but you know when you accelerate an electron with a uh, by applying a potential v 
what's the expression for potential energy it is e times v this will be converted to its kinetic energy okay so you can substitute instead of this kinetic energy to m e v using that we can substitute in the value of lambda so this will be h divided by root of 2 m e v by substituting the values h we know m is the mass of electron e is the charge of electron and v is the potential we can see that in this particular case the potential is 54 volt okay so when you apply that uh, voltage and uh, calculating the wavelength the expression we get is 1.67 angstrom okay so by davison and germer experiment we calculated the value of wavelength lambda as sorry here it is not d it is lambda the wavelength lambda is calculated from davison germer experiment as 1.65 angstrom at the same time using de broglie relation we calculated the wavelength as 1.67 angstrom so one 1.67 angstrom and the other one is 1.65 angstrom the experimental result obtained is in close agreement with the calculated value using de broglie relation so this became a uh, solid proof for the de broglie concept of matter waves okay thus the davison germer experiment directly verifies the de broglie hypothesis of wave nature of particle the same experiment was repeated with the neutrons also and the same result was obtained so the wave nature of matter is therefore proved to be a universal phenomena or universal entity now okay so here we learned the davison germer experiment which is used to prove the de broglie concept of matter waves okay students thank you